So if we consider our previous class, we managed to work with this part of the uh, calculating of the stress, which I said it is influenced or affected because of the types of the forces that we are given. And with that, we are going to have a continuation uh, working with the strain uh, in that case, all right? So we're gonna just have a continuation uh, that is having with the strain. So the strain is represented uh, by the epsilon, this symbol, uh, which is referred to as the epsilon, okay? Uh, the one that we have been using for the direct stress is the sigma. This one is referred as the, as the sigma. These are just uh, Greek alphabets, guys, so do not worry about that. So this is your strain. So the strain... It is affected because of the object that we are given that it is affected by a certain force. Okay, there is a, maybe let's consider that we have got a concrete uh, block that we are given. Let me just try have it this way. And it is subjected to a certain force. Okay, its cross-sectional area is being subjected to a certain force. Remember, this object will be having uh, its length, this and that, all right? So there, we're gonna have our, this part going back, all right, something like that. So it can be affected, the whole section, like the length can be affected of this object, all right? We are referring to its length. So this length here, can be affected, can be extended. Once this length is affected, that we, there is now an extension in terms of the length. There is an extension. The length is being extended. This is best to describe the direct stress. Direct stresses, they change the length of the component. They do change the length of the component. And as we do know, this change in length is very, very small. But it can be even noticed by a human eye. Very small. So that extension, just going to call it X. Change in length. Extension that is being brought. So this is part where... The area is being affected depending the section that you're given. You have to find its area uh, when you are to, to talk of the stress, all right? But for the strain, we talk of the change in length. So it follows that the strain is equal to the change in length, which is our extension over L, which is representing the original length. So this is the change in length, talking about the change in length. This is our original length. This is what we have. So this is length, this is length. So therefore this does not have the units because if we use meters and meters, they will cancel. If you use millimeters over millimeters, they will also cancel. So also it does not affect to say which length are you using the, the, the length that you're using? If you're using millimeters, also use the millimeters. For strain, does not affect. So at the end, we can see that we do not have units. There are no units. So there must be a change in length related to the original length for us to talk of the strain. So with this, guys, and what we had before, we are going to continue making calculations uh like i say this is stress and strain at the same time so you must remember what we talked about in our previous class the first question that we are having we have got the information that a concrete block 600 millimeters long and measures 20 a uh, 200 millimeters along each side along each side okay 
we have we have to be careful there. Remember, I was talking about the issue of the block there. This is the area and the length. So this is the condition how it is going to be like. This is the condition of how it is going to be to be like. There's a section that is affected, which is the area and the length uh, on the other part. So it's a square. This one is 200 millimeters along each side, like 200 millimeters here, 200 millimeters here. So it's a square. But the length is taken now to, to the other part, uh, other section, because definitely you're going to be having another section there. There's going to be another section. So to that section, that you are you are going to have they are saying the length to that section the length that is being taken is the one that you are given as what the length is this one two uh, the 600 millimeters long that is the original length that you are given there it is the length which is same as if you divide by 1000 that's uh, 0 0.6 meters then each side, they're talking about this one. Along each side, this is the area, the section, like the section of the square that we'll be seeing there. So there is 200 millimeters here. There's also 200 millimeters here. In meters, this is 0, 0,2 if you divide by 1,000 in meters. So this is like what we are given there. And they are saying, the column supports a load of 90 ton on its square surface. The square surface. Force that is being applied. So meaning to say if it is like this, the force that is being applied. Compression. Talking of the compression force being applied on top. So this is the condition that you're just having. So do not worry about just understand like the presentation that you have so that it will be uh, easier for you now to take your information. As you are taking your information, you know that this is your length. How long? That's the length. So we've got 0, 0,6 meters. If you convert to meters, then this is for the area. Since each side is given, that's the area that we are given. Remember, it's a square. Area of a square is what? Side times side in our mathematics. So it is the area 0, 0,2 meters long each side. So it's 0, 0,2 times 0, 0,2. You are given the area there, side times side. They are simply giving you the area from that information. So this was going to give us uh, 0, 0,04 square meters. We have already converted this to, to, square me to meters. So it will be in square meters. 0, 0,04 square meters. You're given area there of each, I mean the area of the square surface. And they are saying the column supports a lot of 90 ton. This is the mass that we are given, not the force. As we need the force. So what are you going to do with the mass? 90 ton. Remember a ton, 1,000 kilograms. So what about 90 ton? What are you going to do? Multiply by 1,000. So that's 90,000 kilograms. You are given the mass. Not the force. So what is the force? Mass times the gravitational acceleration. So we have that mass, 90,000 times 9,81. So that was going to give us uh, the force that is being uh, supported by this uh, concrete, by the, uh, the square. So that was going to give us 882,900 uh, Newton. You have the force applied. So from our calculations or from this data that we have, is length, is area, is also force. This is what we have. So the question was, calculate the compressive stress in the column, ignore the mass of the column itself. This one, ignore the mass of it. Just going to consider the mass that we already given of what it is supporting. Calculate the compressive stress. So from our previous calculations, said stress is simply taken from force over area where the type of force is the one that affects the type of stress. 
compressive. So you're talking of what? The compressive stress because of the force that is being applied. But the formula does not change. Okay? So the formula does not change. So the, you're talking of the stress in that case, which is equivalent to the force over what? Area. Are we having this? We check we've got everything. Force is given. We calculated. Uh, that is 882,900 over what? Area. We calculated this also. Uh, 0, 0,04. Or you just multiply 0, 0,2 times 0, 0,2. Like I said before, yeah, as you are talking of the stress, calculating the stress, your answer is in megapascal. So to convert this to the megapascal, simply multiply by what? 10 to the exponent of negative 6. Your answer will be automatically in megapascal. The moment you do this, your answer will be automatically in megapascal. So that was going to give us 22,0725, something like this, which is 723 uh, megapascal. You have already converted this answer that you're getting. It's already been converted to megapascal by multiplying by this. So we have... our compressive stress, the stress from the compressive force. On B, they are saying, if the concrete block becomes 0 0.5 millimeters shorter, what is it? There's a change that has happened in length. An extension, it is, it is extended, coming back, the change in length. So we are given that it's, it is 0 0.5 millimeters. The change, the extension, calculate the magnitude of the strain. So as we do understand that the strain is equal to the change in length over the original length. So like I said before, if we are to use the meters, we are supposed to also use the meters. If you use millimeters, use millimeters. So the original length, this one, it was 0, 0,6, which is same as what? Uh, the 600 millimeters. If you choose to use this in millimeters, meaning so you're going to also to maintain the millimeters. Remember I talked about this, that it's it's unitless. It's unitless. No units. So the units that I choose here are supposed to be maintained. Okay, so if I use the millimeters, uh, that's 0 0.5 millimeters. I'm supposed to use the original length given the how long that is the length. So this and this will cancel. So that is our strain. So in that case, you, we were going to obtain uh, that's another a lot of decimals that you're going to have here. Uh, 0 0.00083333333 000 and so on and so on. So we can just write this uh, to any uh, decimal. Just move the commas. Like I said before, one, two, three, four, until we get a whole number there. So that's 8, 3, 3, 3 times 10 to the exponent of minus 4, depending on the way that you want to write it as. But that is your strain. From the change in length and the original length, it can be calculated. So questions can be like that. Another part we are given, in this case, there is a round steel rolled or has a diameter of 30 millimeters. So according to the information that you're given, there is a diameter, 30 millimeters, which is simply if you divide by 1,000, uh, that's 0 0.03 meters. And a length of 900 uh, 700 millimeters by 1,000. If you divide, that's going to be 0, 0.7 meters. Then the, the rod hangs vertically and supports a lot. There's a, it is supporting a lot of what? 40 kilonewton hanging from it. So that is the force. 40 kilo newton. So this is what we have. And with this information, they are saying calculate the tensile stress in the steel. So we're still back, guys, the stress. 
from where the force over the area are we having the area from the diameter once the diameter is given remember that area is pi uh, d squared over 4 so meaning to say as we are to calculate this we can even substitute and have this as the force over what pi d squared over over 4 and just substitute this at once as we are now used to this calculating of the area yes you can do that but now let's try to get used to this so the force is given 40 kilonewton over what the given area that is pi times the diameter squared uh, 0 0.03 uh, squared over what over 4 so this whole part is going to give us the stress and in megapascal how are we going to convert to megapascal times 10 to the exponent of minus 6? Our answer will be in megapascal. So that's it. So from there, you're going to obtain a 56,588 megapascal as your stress, tensile stress. All right, another question. Calculate the strain of this rod if it becomes 0 0.18, 0 0.189 millimeters longer owing to this rod. Meaning to say there is an extension given there, x, change in length. So with this, we can calculate our strain. So the strain is what? Change in length over the original length. So the change in length is already given. 0 0.189 millimeters, meaning to say the original length is supposed to be in millimeters also. So we use 700 millimeters, same units. If you choose meters, also use the meters on the other one so that this one and this one can simply cancel. So you can obtain a 0 0.00027. As our strain. So we shall have a continuation uh, on this part, working with the type of stress, that is the shear stress and the shear strain in our calculations. How do they affect our calculations? That will be for our next class. Till we meet again.